welcome guys to T-Log. This is Traveling with T part two. I wanted to make this video since a few months already, but now finally I'm back in Munich. And um, yeah, I also recorded one version of it already when I was in Bui Shan. And I, I will just show you the, this footage and whatever I didn't mention, I will have to uh, edit in post. I'll also give away a new kind of travel set, which we found in uh, China, which is quite practical, super small porcelain uh, from Jing Zen. Um, so stay tuned and yeah, we'll give it away by the end of the video. Today we are in uh, Wuyi Shan, Fujian province in China, and we are hiking in the national park, um, the most famous place for the Wuyi Yanchas, the rock teas, oolongs. Um, yeah, I'm here with my girlfriend, and we packed some teaware and some tea, brew tea in the mountains. And this is actually the second part of a series on traveling with tea. Um, this episode I want to cover the other aspects besides the tea wear, like um, yeah, the water, which is probably the most important topic, and then some other aspects as well, other accessories and so on. I'm just walking here on a very steep cliff and there's like a small tea garden below us. Behind us is the Wuishan town with all the tea gardens and here we have a beautiful view of what's gonna be up there. These, all these rocks and uh, small um, valleys and gorges where all the beautiful tea is growing. So we're gonna look for a nice spot now for making tea. So we're gonna hike up a bit further. And we just started like the hike in a small village called Lantan 10 minutes ago. Yeah, we'll go now further up the mountain and uh, I use that time to talk about water, which is probably the most important aspect for brewing tea, because even if you have a very good tea and the best tea where if you have bad water, tea won't be good. So yeah, if you're at home, you have probably a very stable and like, um, curated water source in the sense that you already found a good way to to get your water either bottled water you have a filter or your tap water is really good or whatever um, if you're traveling you don't really have access to those kind of waters so you have to figure out something um, a lot of hotels especially here in Asia they have like water filters or even hot water dispensers which normally work with a reverse osmosis system. So this is quite good water for a beginning and good enough when you're traveling. So, um, but you can never be sure if the water is really filtered, so you have to test it and so on. And if it turns out to be bad, then you have to find another water source. So um, one way is to go into a shop and check the bottled water and actually check most bottled waters have the mineral content written on them, at least in the local language, which isn't so easy here in China. But yeah, so you, you can uh, use uh, the readings on the bottle um, to determine if it's a good water. Try to find something which has a low mineral content and a low pH, which means seven or below, which means neutral or slightly acidic, which is normally good which indicates also a low mineral content and the TDS total dissolved solids of 150 milligram per liter or less um, normally the TDS is at least indicated on the bottle 
There's also a, one device which I use, it's like a TDS meter. It's like a small device. You can buy it at Amazon for like 10 bucks. And you can use to test the, the water, the tap water, and any other kind of water before you use it. Um, that's also a great indicator, but low TDS doesn't mean it's really good water. It's just some kind of like first, uh, first method to determine if the water is really bad. Another great option obviously is using spring water, um, but it's not that easy to find clean water, especially if you're in a place uh, which is not that very high and where there's lots of agriculture. So you always have to be very careful. The best thing is if you choose any kind of spring which looks like clean water or any kind of like uh, mountain stream. And you can be quite sure that above this mountain stream, there's no agriculture, there are no animals, grassing and, and so on, because all these like chemicals and um, the manure, and I don't know what can all leach into the, the groundwater and then be in that water. And yeah, so we picked our spot now, um, beautiful tea plantations behind us and some big rock actually up there is the famous Ma Yen, where the famous Ma Ro, the horse meat is growing like a Ro Gui uh, from that spot is like the one of the most sought after Jenshas. Let's make some tea. Yeah, so I like to use this thermos. It's half a liter. Um, it has a really nice uh, pouring mechanism and it uh, insulates the water quite well. So even uh, after like five, six hours, it's still quite hot. And after like 24 hours, it's still like warm. I mean, not enough uh, heat for a, um, uh, an oolong or black tea, but maybe enough for, for some kind of Japanese green tea or something. So that's what I even like. So I use that, uh, have some hot water in the evening, in the early morning I can make a sencha when I'm like sleeping in a tent or something. Um, yeah, it's just half a liter. So if you're a person who drinks a lot of like um, Gongfu Cha style oolongs or uh, mostly poor tea, you probably have to opt for the bigger option. But yeah, this is fine. I like to have it more compact because I don't want to carry so much weight with me. So that's much better. I can carry that where, wherever I go. I take this thermos. Um, yeah, some other tips when you're gro brewing on the go. Um, you always have to uh, remember that you don't have any like mechanism to reheat your water unless you bring some kind of um, gas burner or something, which I will cover later. But if you just have a thermos and you have your guy one, you have to make sure that you use always this uh, this hot water to the best extent. So first of all, you have to make sure that the water is as hot as possible when you pour it in. So reheat your thermos always. Uh, boil the water once, pour in the, the hot water, uh, wait for like two minutes, shake it a bit and remove the hot water and immediately pour in reboiled water. So just like make sure that you don't let the, the thermos cool down, just pour in hot water again. And then when brewing, it's always good to not wait too long uh, between the steeps or let the gaiwan cool down too much because um, when the gaiwan cools down and you pour in like hot water the water will cool down immediately to by 10 degrees celsius or something which means that um, yeah you, you don't brew with 95 but with 85 but if you keep on brewing very fast or if you uh, you kind of like close the lid a bit just with a small opening uh, you don't lose, lose as much heat and you can actually brew it at much higher temperature. It's another tip. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are some other aspects of, of, of um, making tea on the go or, or um, brewing tea outside. For example, how you bring your tea. Normally I try to keep it in a small 
uh, pack it as uh, small as possible because um, you don't want to carry a big batch of tea with you and then it gets spoiled because of rain or something. So yeah, um, for example, I keep all my matcha cans, these small like 20 gram matcha cans and you use them to, to carry my tea when I'm outside. And there are other aspects like how you could heat water when you're on the mountain. Um, there are like alcohol burners, there are gas stoves, there are like things which are called Kelly Kettle, which I like to use a lot uh, when I'm camping. And obviously there you can also like uh, carry an entire um, coal charcoal stove up the mountain, which would probably be quite heavy. Um, these are all op options um, uh, if you're doing tea outside. Um, but I think I will make a different uh, video about all these like heating options uh, at another time. Yeah, so what did we cover in this video? We covered uh, how to find good water, testing your water, checking uh, the, the mineral contents on the bottle. Once you found good water, how to bring it uh, to the place where you want to brew the tea in a thermos, uh, which is the way to go for me. Um, there are other ways to heat the water, but I think that's the easiest for everyone. And then we covered some small tips, how to make sure that you get most out of your tea um, even though you don't have this like kettle next to you, which is always reheating the water and you can like push the tea really to its end. Um, yeah. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and the tips for making tea on the go or when you're traveling or when you're hiking. Um, yeah, I, as I said before, I want to give away one of those Gawan sets. I, I took four or five with me from China. It's Jingdu Zen porcelain, white with a blue rim and it's one pitcher, one gawan and three cups and it's very compact. You can go climbing with it, make tea um, in the mountains, in the rocks, wherever. And um, yeah, in order to uh, win this gawan, you just have to comment this video and within the next two weeks, I will um, yeah, randomly choose one comment or one person who commented. This person will get this uh, guy one sent to him directly. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments what you think about and if you have any further tips and tricks, what other people can learn from you and what you are using, how you carry your water to the mountains, how you heat your water in the mountains and so on. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye bye. Ha 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 ha.